It's your girl, Abrea Serenity. I'm back at you with another prophetic word. And the name of this prophetic word is called the prodigal returns, okay? I know a lot of you guys have been standing for your prodigals, whether that be your spouse, whether it be a family member or a friend that kind of wandered off into the world and you kind of just been praying for them, interceding for them and standing for them in prayer. This is the time where they are getting ready to return to you, okay? This is, this is the moment that we have all been standing for. This is the time where they are getting ready to finally come back them have already turned their lives over they just haven't had the courage to come back home okay so a lot of these people have already turned their life over a lot of them have already said yeah i can't do this anymore a lot of them have already reached the point where they're like i need a change you know but they didn't have the courage to come back to you they didn't have the courage to come back and do what they needed to do but and in this hour the lord is giving them that courage their feet are going to follow their brain and their thoughts. You know, the Holy Spirit is going to direct their steps and they're going to end up right back home. A lot of you are excited because they come back. A lot of you have been looking forward to this. Um, and you'll know that this word is for you because the Lord has already confirmed this to you. The Lord has already told you that they coming back in soon. Like he's already told you probably in your prayer time, sent you a dream and told you that your prodigal is getting ready to come back. So you are in expectancy of their return like any day now. There's a part of this that I think um, a lot of people need to prepare their hearts for um, because a lot of people have these expectations that when their prodigals return, especially if it's a prodigal spouse, that when they come back, that it's just going to be like some type of fairy tale, you know, or it's going to be like, you know, your prodigal wife or your prodigal, your husband is going to come back and they're going to step up and they just going to step in and everything's going to be peaches and cream when really, you know, they're going to come back empty handed, come back broke. They're going to come back with nothing. Anything that was attached to their old life is going to be stripped from them, okay? I just released a prophetic word like last month about the rise and the fall of Franklin Saint. If you haven't had the opportunity to go watch that, go ahead and watch that, okay? And that talks about what's going to happen to a lot of these prodigals. A lot of them getting ready to be stripped of everything. So I know it's going to be kind of weird because a lot of you guys have been watching your prodigals through a different lens. You've been watching them through social media. You've been watching them, you know, just from a different perspective. And they seem like they've been living the life. They seem like they've been doing well. They seem like they have everything that, um, you know, that they need or could ever want to provide for you and the family that you're going to create together. But you guys have to understand that the prodigal son in the Bible left home with everything, but he came back with nothing. Left with wealth. So he was in the world living it up. He had women at his side. He had the friends. He had the wine. He had the designer clothes. He was living the life. But then he fell on hard times and he was stripped of everything and he lost everything. And it was then that he came back home. So a lot of these prodigals coming back broke. They coming back without nothing and some of you guys need to check your heart posture are you still going to be standing for these prodigals are you still going to be standing for them when they come back empty-handed when they have nothing to offer are you still going to stand for them are you still going to intercede for them are you still going to have the patience that you've had all this time while the lord has been preparing you for them are you still going to be standing for them with love or are you going to resent them or are you going to be looking at TikTok videos about the sprinkle, sprinkle lady, about how you should have dated somebody with some money? You know, are you still going to be standing for them? You think that the same treatment and lifestyle that they were giving the counterfeit is going to automatically transfer over onto you, but it's not. A lot of you are going to be kind of confused because you're going to be like, how is it that, you know, the counterfeit got this lifestyle, but I'm struggling with this person. You and your God are dating spouse, your, your prodigal, specifically prodigal spouse. Your prodigal are going to be struggling to rebuild, but to just know the Lord still has his hand on you. I'm not even going to say struggling, okay, because I'm not, I'm not going to say struggling, but you guys are going to have to work very hard to rebuild because you guys have to understand that your prodigal was in sin. And so everything they did and had was produced of a result of sin. You in the world, the enemy is going to reward you with worldly things. And now that you're in Christ, everything that is worldly is going to be stripped from you. You have to rebuild your life. In an honest way, a lot of these prodigals were making money illegally. They didn't make an honest living. So all the money that they were making was cursed money or blood money or just some type of illegal money. And the Lord is not going to allow your prodigal to provide a life for his God ordained spouse or family or friends with cursed money. Coming back broke, humbled 
but broke and they left home with everything came back with nothing but they didn't necessarily come back with nothing because they came back with humility and they're coming back with the Holy Spirit, baptizing the Holy Spirit and a lot of experience, a lot of wisdom and knowledge about the things they've experienced when they were out in the world, you know, and they're coming back with their gifts activated too. A lot of these prodigals are prophetic. A lot of these prodigals have gifts. They're seers. They, they are, um, you know, anointed in their own way and their gifts are going to be activated. You know, as soon as they get back home and it's going to be just a blessing to see, but you guys are going to need an extreme amount of patience with them. They're not going to have anything and you have to be willing to love them just the same as you did when they were in the world, even though they have nothing to offer you right now. Ooh, that's the, that sound kind of tough, don't it? Loving someone when they have nothing to offer you. That sounds tough because the world teaches us to do the opposite. Don't love somebody if they don't have anything to offer you, but you are going to have to love your prodigal even though they have nothing to offer you, okay? The Lord had to take all the sin out of their life, okay? Anything they purchased with cursed money cannot come with them, okay? So a lot of them, that's earth thing, okay? They not even gonna have no, no, um, no clothes. They ain't gonna have no shoes. They car, gone, you know? Everything that they bought with cursed money probably not going to come with them. So you guys need to have that in consideration. These people are going to have nothing. So some of the uh, the wives and the spouses that are standing for them are going to kind of have to like, you know, cover them. You know, not just with prayer anymore. You're not going to be covering this prodigal with prayer anymore. You're going to be covering them financially. You're going to be covering them um, and feeding them and, and rehabilitating them. You know, as they figure out how to create a life where they can be the head and not the tail legally. Because a lot of them don't know how to do that. A lot of them don't know how to make an honest living. And they're also um, completely doing a complete 180. So the Lord is totally transforming their life and teaching them exactly what he wants them to do. Okay. Anything that they got from the counterfeit or because of the counterfeit has to go. So any electronics, any clothes, like jewelry can't come, it can't come with them. Okay. More than likely, they probably not even going to take it with them. They're going to leave it. Okay. Anything that they got because of the counterfeit is probably not going to be of any use to them. You know, I don't think it's going to be that they don't want to take it with them, but I feel like God is going to strip it from them. What happened to somebody I knew is that their car, you know, went out, something happened to their car, you know, and that's a car they got with that counterfeit. And the Lord was like, nope, can't have that. Or they got it because of their counterfeit and the Lord took it from them. Another thing that happened was that they did a lot of business off their iPad that their counterfeit got them. And their their iPad all of a sudden it broke. You know, everything that was connecting them to their counterfeit, anything that was connecting them to sin is just going to somehow end up broken. It's going to somehow end up missing. It's going to somehow end up damaged to the point where if they leave, it cannot come with them. Having already, they getting ready to lose their job. Okay, and that's that's prophetic. Like if they haven't already, if they are currently working, like they got them a little jobby job and the Lord's getting ready to remove them from a situation or they getting ready to come back home, they're going to lose that job. When they come back, don't expect this, you know, royal treatment and lavish gifts and this this very nice lifestyle right off the back. You know, they will be useful to you in other ways, but that part is it, going to take some time. It's going to take some time, you know, for them to get to a point where they are the sole provider of the family. So for a while, you guys are going to have to work together to provide and create a stable environment for each other. And you're really going to have to have patience and a lot of communication. While your husband or your wife cannot meet your needs right away, the Lord is going to have your needs met. And in that time, he's going to be working with you both. But be patient with your prodigal, okay? Um... Don't let the world be in your ear, okay, about what a man should be doing or what a woman should be doing when your prodigal returns. Because they're going to be in your ear talking about, oh, you need to go find better. I don't think the Lord will want you to be with somebody like that. Oh, the Lord wouldn't have you holding down the fort like that. That's not a wife's position. That's not what a husband should do. That's not what a wife should do. They're going to be all in your ear telling you everything that's going to make you want to leave your God or dang spouse. So while you guys are being worked on the Lord wants you to um hold down the fort while he's rebuilding your spouse working with them and showing them exactly um how he wants them to provide for their family and contribute to their family okay and in a Christ-like way that's pleasing to him okay 
And you guys are going to have to like really be patient and you're really going to have to understand that this is God's will for the now, but it ain't going to last always. Okay. You may endure it for the night, but joy comes in the morning, you know, and even though you guys are going through this adjustment period, there's going to be a lot of happy memories in between. Okay. Everything that they lose. Okay. The Lord will replace it and double it. Okay. Your spouse, if it is a man, he will be a provider. Okay, and some of you will never have to work again if you don't want to like, but it ain't going to be right away. But at some point, your God ordained spouse will make it so that you don't have to work. It will be an option, not an obligation. You know, you won't have to ever say, if I don't work, I won't eat. It's going to be like, I go to work because I want to go to work, even though I don't, I don't have to. You know, I, my husband or my wife has made it so that we don't have to do this anymore. We have a certain lifestyle that's just, you know, we do what we want to do because the Lord has called us to do it, not because we need it to survive. They will seek refuge and come straight to you empty handed, but full of humility accompanied by the Holy Spirit. It will be an adjustment period for you all and a time to pray over every single thing under your covering. In this time, you need to be praying over children if you have any. You need to be praying over the ministries if you have any. You need to be praying over your marriage before you get married. You need to be praying over your, your belongings, your, your home, the place that you lay your head. Anything under your covering, under your responsibility needs to be interceded and wrapped in prayer. Psalms 91 prayer protection. Okay. Do not be disappointed if they do not have much to offer you upon their arrival. They are starting over with you and God leading the way. I remember what it was like for y'all when y'all started over, when y'all came into Christ, but a lot of y'all didn't have your spouse by your side. A lot of you didn't have that person, you know, to help you start over. It was just you and God. The person gets to start over with you and Jesus. And I feel like that's a blessing. I remember what it was like for you starting over when you had nobody and the Lord was stripping you of everything. And how lonely and isolating that was. And how little patience people had with you when you were trying to get on your feet. Welcome them with open arms and be in prayer. The Lord will make provisions for you all. Do not worry. This prophetic word is called the prodigal returns. But do understand what that means for you as a spouse of a prodigal. Is that your prodigal may come back empty handed with nothing to offer you for a while. Okay, but the Lord will make provisions for you. The Lord will provide and make sure that your needs are met. Okay, love on your spouse. Understand that they're going through rehabilitation. They're going through a hard time and the Lord is rebuilding them. Okay. They are completely starting from ground zero. And you guys remember what that was like. You remember what that was like. But I think a lot of people have an unrealistic expectations of this whole prodigal spouse thing. Y'all think they're going to come back and they're going to just be providing you this lavish life. They're going to be the head and not the tail through the gate. They're going to be the lender, not the borrower through the gate. Not for a lot of us. Not for a lot of people. You guys are going to be working together. Some days it's going to be 50-50. Some days it's going to be 80-20. Are you still going to be standing for them in love? Are you still going to implement all the things that the Lord has instilled in you over these last couple years? Even when your prodigal returns, you still have to stand in love for them, okay? All right. My name is Abrea Serenity, and that's the prophetic word today. And I will see you all next time.